good Tuesday afternoon and welcome back to Tuesday night Bible study tonight we're actually going to pick back up in Acts, Acts chapter 8 I think we left off at verse 18 uh, don't know that we'll get through the whole chapter tonight but we'll go ahead and get started let's get back uh, Acts chapter 8 verse 18. Let's pick back up. While we're doing that, let's do a little bit of a quick review. We learned of the, the course tonight's lesson title again is Saul Persecutes the Church, part two. And we learned about Saul, a little bit about Saul. We learned about a, uh, a deacon and a preacher named Philip, and we'll actually get back into uh, talking about Philip a little later on in this chapter. Uh, then we learned about Simon, uh, a man that was a uh, very powerful witch with, with witchcraft, and he actually had turned his life over to the Lord. So let's, let's get back into it. Verse 18, now when Simon saw that the Spirit was bestowed through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. Remember, we talked about this guy a little earlier, last Tuesday. This guy was a powerful man of witchcraft. He was doing wonders through the witchcraft, through Satan, and he was getting paid for it. This man was making a living off of it. All right, then man still don't understand, okay? He says here, now when Simon saw that the Spirit was bestowed through the laying on of hands, remember the apostles come in, laid their hands on them, they actually started receiving gifts, and Simon's seen this. So he thinks this has to do with money, okay? Right here is Simon's sinful proposal. Let's call it that. Simon saw the work of God in Peter and John. Simon offered them money, wanting the same power. Simon wanted to buy the Spirit of God for personal gain and power. Remember, this was what this man was used to. He was used to making a living off of this. But it was witchcraft. It wasn't through the Spirit of God. Verse 19, saying, Give this authority to me as well, so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Let's go on. Let's go ahead and read a couple more verses. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. One more verse. You have no part or portion in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. All right. Peter here rebukes him. Peter states here to Simon, your money will perish with you if you don't change. Because a gift of God cannot be purchased with money, folks. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't work your way into heaven. There's only one way, folks, into heaven. And that's through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. No other way. Peter tells Simon here his heart is not right in the sight of God. A gift of God, this proves that the gifts are literal gifts that we talked about, okay? Let's go on. Let's see what happens here. Verse 21. You have no, por you have no portion or part of in this matter. Your heart is not right before God. Therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray the Lord that if possible, the intention of your heart may be forgiven. All right. 
For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bondage of iniquity. What does he mean here? Peter tells Simon here, you need to repent of this wickedness right now. You need to change your heart and understand this is a free gift given to each individual that believes. Peter tells Simon here, you cannot have these type of thoughts in your heart and serve God. Peter tells Simon here, I understand you used to be in a bond of iniquity under Satan's spell. God has freed you from that sin and you must repent immediately of these evil thoughts and understand this is a free gift that God gives. He gives it freely. All of God's gifts are free and he gives them freely to, he, to whom he pleases. Verse 24, but Simon answered and said, pray to the Lord for me yourselves so that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. Simon was very afraid here of judgment. This you could see was a change in him. He had changed, but he did not understand that. And Simon here was very concerned about his soul. He did not want anything bad to fall upon him. He asked Peter to pray for him. So Simon converted. Simon changed here. We see that. And hopefully, it sort of leaves us a little bit out there, but I do believe here that Simon completely prayed and changed his life, or let's hope he did. All right, we're getting ready to start verse 25. We're going to learn about an Ethiopian. This Ethiopian is going to receive Christ. Now remember, he's still a, he's an Ethiopian eunuch. He's a Jew, okay? And we'll talk about that, all right? We'll talk about that. Remember, at this point in time, only Jews so far to this point, Jewish people, have been offered the gospel, have been offered salvation, okay? All right, let's get into it here. Verse 25, so when they had solemnly testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they started back to Jerusalem and were preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. All right, so you could, we could actually consider this Peter and John's first evangelistic, evangelistic tour, okay? All right, verse 26, but an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Now, let's get back to Philip here. Remember, we talked about Philip before. He was one of the seven original deacons, and that God had called him to preach. All right, but an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Get up and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza, for this is a desert road, the Bible tells us, Okay. So here we're going to see where, a God, where God has called this angel to testify to Philip, to tell him and give him direction on what he needs to do. All right. What's the angel tell Philip to do here? He tells him to go from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, Gaza was a town about three miles from the sea. This is also the last town on the road into Egypt. Okay? All right. Verse 27. So he got up and went. And that sort of needs to stick out to all of us as Christians today. When God calls us to do something. Philip didn't argue. Philip didn't question why. The Bible says Philip got up and went. So he obeyed. And there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Cadence, 
queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure, and he had come to Jerusalem to worship. Now, all right, he was a proselyte, okay? What a proselyte is, is a first century con convert to Judaism. So he had given his life over to Judaism. So he was actually a practicing Jew, okay? What a eunuch is, a eunuch is a man that's been castrated for the purpose of trusted servitude in a royal priesthood, okay? That's why he's called an Ethiopian eunuch, all right? This Ethiopian man had great authority under Cadence. And who is Cadence? She's queen of the, of the Ethiopians. Cadence is the title given to an Ethiopian queen similar to Pharaoh in Egypt. That's how much power she has, okay? This man was so important, he was over the queen's treasure, her household. And this man had come to Jerusalem to worship, okay? So he was adopted into he was, a first, he was a proselyte. He was a first century convert to Judaism, okay? So yes, he is adopted into Judaism. He is adopted in as a Jewish individual, okay? All right, verse 27. So he went up and went, and there was an Ethiopian, well, I'm sorry, I didn't read that one, 28. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot, so he had done went in, worshipped, and it says he was returning, so I'm assuming he was probably returning to Ethiopia, okay? He was returning, and he was in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. All right, so we're seeing here that God is dealing with this Ethiopian eunuch. Okay, he was practicing the law, and this is something for us to Christians that sticks out to me. Okay, God call God is called Philip, and we're going to see Philip is going to go testify to this individual. So, as a Christian, when God lays it on our hearts to witness to someone, we need to remember one thing. I will grant you one thing. God is already dealing with that individual. He's already in front of you. He's already been there. Now he's asking you to go plant that seed. So a lot of times, in, instead of us questioning him, we just need to make that move and go and follow God's lead because God is not going to call you to witness to someone that he's not dealing with, okay? So, Philip was being led by the Holy Spirit here, okay? Now, let's look at this. Verse 29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go up and join this chariot. Now, could you imagine Philip walking up on this Ethiopian eunuch in, I'm sure it's one of Cadence's chariots, and he was reading the scrolls of Isaiah which Isaiah, is, of course, we know as the Old Testament, a book in the Old Testament. And God calls on him, and he says, Philip, go up and join this chariot. In other words, go up and invite yourself and speak to this man. Again, think about this as us as Christians and how he calls on us to witness to someone. We need to step out of our comfort zone, folks, and do this, all right? So let's see what Philip does here. Look at this, verse 30. Philip ran up. He didn't walk. He didn't stay there and say, well, God, why do I need to do this? Why are you, do, why, why are you using me? He does not do any of this. He immediately, the Bible says he ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet. And he said, do you understand what you are reading? What a better way to start a conversation. 
So do you not think Philip knows the, the law? He knows it well. He was a practicing Jew of the law before he was converted to Christianity. So he knows and he understands Isaiah the prophet. And like I said, what a better way to start a conversation. He asks him here, he says, what are you reading? And he said, well, how could I, unless someone guides me, and he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Another proof that God was dealing with this Ethiopian eunuch. All right, so the eunuch invites him up. Come up, said, sit down with me. Well, let's talk about this. That opens it up for Philip to witness about Jesus Christ. Now look. Now the passage of Scripture was, he was reading, was this. He was led as a sheep to slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he does not open his mouth. Let me go on. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who will relate this generation? For his life is removed from the earth. Who's this talking about? Folks, this is talking about Jesus. This is talking about how he was led and died on the cross for the sins of the world, folks. And we see that right here, okay? We see that right here. We see there's two scriptures here that are talking about Jesus. He's talking about Jesus' persecution, Jesus' humiliation, Jesus' crucifixion, and Jesus' death. Verse 34, the eunuch answered Philip and said, tell me, please tell me of whom does the prophet say this? In other words, he asked him a question here. He said, who's this prophet speaking about? And then he asked him another question. Whom does the prophet say this or himself or is it of someone else? In other words, who is this? This question opened the door for Philip to start his conversation about Jesus Christ. Okay? This opened the door for him. All right. Verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and beginning from the scripture, he preached Jesus to him. Philip began at the same scripture, but Philip taught him here by the scripture that was within, that this was Jesus, the Messiah, by his death, burial, and resurrection, okay? As they went along the road, they came to, to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? In other words, Philip here has gotten saved, and now he's asking, the eunuch here has gotten saved, I'm sorry, and he's asking Philip here. He says, I've got saved, I've got my heart right, so what do I need to do? Here's water. What prevents me from being baptized, okay? So this man wanted to be baptized with water. The verse is proof that Philip explained the gospel and its fullest to this man. Verse 37, and Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So we see right here, Philip asked the Ethiopian a very important question. Do you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe what I've just preached to you? The Ethiopian man answered yes. All right, Bible says, it's all he has to do to be saved, right? Well, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 Paul writes to God's beloved in Rome that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Do you see it here in this unit? Absolutely. He tells him right here, 
Philip asked him, he said, do you believe with all your heart? And he answered and says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So there it is. He's saved. He, can, he believed in his heart and he confessed Jesus Christ as his Lord. Okay? So, 38. And he ordered the chariot to stop and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. So we see here the private baptismal service of this eunuch. Now there's something I want to point out to you here. Okay? It's very important. And I taught a lesson on rapture of the church. I taught there, there have been six raptures prior to the seventh will be the church. Rapture is not a new thing in the Bible. It's, of course, there's a lesson on there that you can look. If you want to go to my YouTube channel, Junior Tate, you can pull it up and look at it. There's six raptures that's happened in the Bible. We're getting ready to see Philip being raptured. Now, let me explain this to you. Let's read it and let's talk about it a little bit, okay? All right. Check this verse out. Let me read it again. Verse 38. And he ordered the chariot to stop. Now, look at this. God wants to show us this. And they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now, look at this. When they come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch no longer saw him, but went on his way rejoicing. Now, let me, let me explain something to you. The Bible doesn't say rapture, but the Bible uses different verses to prove. Uh, the Bible talks about snatched away. There's, there's different references to rapture. It doesn't have to say rapture. But the Bible says here that he snatched Philip away. And in other words, when, the, when Philip uh, placed this eunuch under the water to baptize him, as this eunuch was coming back up out of the water, he didn't see Philip. Now think about that. That's how quick God moved this man. God moved, let me, let me go on. God snatched Philip away, all right? And the eunuch didn't see him anymore, but the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. God used him right there at that point for what he wanted. But God needed him in Astos. Let's look at verse 40. But Philip found himself at Astos, and he, as he passed through, he kept preaching the gospel and all the cities until he came to Caesarea. Philip found himself at Astos. God immediately snatched him and moved him 32 miles in a split second. That's what God intended. He wanted him there. This is a type of rapture, folks. He moved him. Philip was moved in instantaneously. And the Bible tells us right here, he snatched him away. But Philip found himself at Astos. Look it up. It's about 32 miles from where he was at at his present time. He immediately was snatched away and removed and placed at this point because that's what God intended to do with him. Now, if anybody wants to look back on my uh, lesson that I taught on, on the... Uh, Raptures. Let's see if I can find it right quick here. It would be probably one of my first or second lessons. It's a probably five months ago. Look it up. It's a really good lesson. It talks about rapture. It defines rapture, it breaks it down, and like I said, this one incident ha happened here is one of the six raptures that God done in the Bible. Some men were raptured to heaven, has not returned. Some men was, uh, just as Philip here, Philip was raptured ahead. He was transported ahead. 
instantaneously. Guys, let's get busy for the Lord. Let's, let's start serving as Christians. Let's serve. Let's do what God's called us to do. And if you're not saved, there's three things, guys, you must do to become saved. First thing you have to do is, of course, admit your sin. And you have to ask, ask God for forgiveness. Most importantly, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he was. He died on the cross for sin. He rose again the third day and was victor victorious over the grave. And you've got to believe that Jesus loves you. And make a commitment to Jesus by faith. And like I said before, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. All you have to do is call upon his name, folks. Believe in him. And then once you're saved, you're going to have a job to do. And that job is to be a disciple and carry out God's will. Serve God with servitude of what he calls us to do. But if everyone would please like and share tonight the, the message so it gets out. Um, hopefully it'll touch someone's life. Message me on Messenger if, you, uh, if you've accepted the Lord. Uh, if you need uh, prayer requests, message me. Let me know. Anything I can do to help you, I will, when it comes to God's ministry. Again, everyone have a blessed night. We will pick up next Tuesday on chapter 9. We will see this man that I talked to you about in this chapter. At the first of it, his name Saul, was an ISIS member. We're going to see his conversion to Christianity in this next chapter. Everyone have a blessed night. Thank you.